I'd like to talk a little bit about the benefits and risks of IPv6 deployment. Um, in the introduction and in the, the overview I gave, I kind of pointedly made the, uh, made the statement that IPv4 started becoming obsolete about 20 years ago. What I meant by that was in the early 1990s, uh, people were already realizing that we're starting to run out of IPv4 address space. Um, a lot of people that are more recent to networking don't realize that. Uh, and we started adding a lot of kludges to our IPv4 networks. I mean, there's, there's uh, private IPv4 addressing, RFC 1918 addressing. There's uh, dynamic address pools, DHCP. Uh, there is, of course, NAT, which everybody loves uh, and seems to be an integral part of almost any IPv4 network, but all those things were there to kind of extend the IPv4 address space. For IPv6, um, we don't really have any of those things. We don't really need any of those things. Do you see that as, as an advantage uh, for deploying IPv6? Well, I think it's an advantage if you want to return back to the purest purpose and form of IP, right? End-to-end -end connectivity. And many people confuse that statement, especially if they're security focused, right? End-to-end -end connectivity scares people because they believe it is, you know, unabated, access to every internal device I have in my network, especially if you're an enterprise focused person. And that, that is not what that means. What it means is if you want it, end-to-end -end reachability is what the original purpose of IP was, and that is really what IPv6 can, can you know, truly deliver. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to go unfiltered and unavailable to be able to do perimeter security and security in depth and those types of principles all remain the same. So the capability of returning back to IP, I think absolutely IPv6 is, is capable of doing. Can we almost politically or religiously, it, it becomes such a hot topic, move purely away from a translated model to a privacy model as it relates to addressing? That's a much more difficult answer because some people are successful uh, with really understanding that you can go into in and maintain security and other people realize that this is just more than I can take um, e initially up front and I think it's going to be a long haul for us to kind of figure out um, if we can wash all of that translation and all of those kind of kludges as you mentioned uh, out of our networks. So uh, I absolutely agree. I think one of the more interesting things is I actually think the the end-to-end -end model is a better security model. It allows both parties to know who they're talking to without any interruption in terms of a, of a translation that is occurring along the line. So my discussions with, with security folks is you should be happier. You actually know the end node that you're talking to. There is nothing they can do to translate behind it again. So you actually know and you should have a distinct advantage in terms of security practices of not having to dig through long, long log files of NAT translations to try and patch together who an individual or who, who the end host is that's actually connecting to you. So I see that as a strategic advantage. Explaining that your security policies really aren't changing at the, at the perimeter and at the interior on host level protections are not going to change. Your policy enforcement is still going to be the same. There's nothing different with v6 than v4 in that way, except for now you actually get to know who the end client device is. And in addition, we don't get all the protocol breakage with everything else that we want to use, like SIP and all the other protocols that actually have embedded addressing information in it. We get a better life out of the end with V6 as opposed to V4 and what we have today.